This podcast is being recorded on May 27th, 2020, and although the stay-at-home order remains in effect, we will enter phase three of the pandemic response next week, and restrictions will be loosened somewhat. But yesterday was Memorial Day, and I received an email from my friend Francis. I'm not sure how old Francis is, but I do know his 90th birthday has come and gone. His wife, Wilma, passed away two years ago, just a few weeks short of her 100th birthday. Francis lives in an assisted living facility, and as you know, COVID-19 has been especially cruel in those places. So for all these weeks, so for all these weeks, Francis has been in isolation in his apartment. He has not been allowed to leave even for meals. They are brought to him and left at his door. All the years I've known him, he has always been upbeat and positive. And despite what he's going through now, alone, his approach to life has not changed in the slightest. He is smart, articulate, gregarious, and wise. Wilma was too, and together they traveled the world. This is from yesterday's Memorial Day email. He said, One time, when Wilma and I happened to be in Luxembourg, we went to the American Military Cemetery. As we entered the gates and saw the hundreds of markers, crucifixes, stars of David in white marble, the tears that ran down our cheeks had great meaning but I still recall reading the inscription over the chapel at the edge of the field. It said, they gave their today so you could have your tomorrow. Every time I talk to Francis, I am inspired to complain less and to encourage more. So let's talk about books that take us into the lives of inspirational people. All of these titles are available through Hoopla. Abraham Lincoln has provided inspiration through the ages, and so it is in a remarkable book, Every Drop of Blood, the Momentous Second Inauguration of Abraham Lincoln by Edward Acorn. We all know the stories of Lincoln. How could this book be any different? But it is. Sometimes history books can be a bit dry. But this one is compelling and richly and richly detailed as it covers not so much the inauguration itself, but rather the 24 hours of the day before and the day after the inauguration. It weaves together the characters and events of those days, all based on meticulous research and told in minute detail. Lincoln's inaugural address is considered one of the greatest in American history. In just 701 words, Lincoln argued that both sides in the Civil War were wrong. Read this book, then join us in the fall to discuss it in the History Pages book discussion group at the library. Another inspiring story is told in The Waiting by Kathy Legros. In 1928, 16-year-old Minka was on a picnic in the woods when she was assaulted and raped. As a, when she was assaulted and raped. As a result, this innocent farm girl who still thought the stork brought babies was pregnant. This is a true story told by Minka's granddaughter. The baby was put up for adoption, and this is the story of the baby and the mother separated for almost 80 years. It tells of the lives they led and the circumstances that finally brought them back together. This is a stunning, inspirational story of forgiveness, faithfulness, and persistent hope. My mother was a nurse during the Great Depression, and she had so many stories to tell. I think all nurses have a wealth of stories to tell. If you enjoyed the James Harriet stories or the Call the Midwife series on PBS, you are sure to enjoy Call the of a Country Nurse on a Scottish Isle by Mary McLeod. 
Nurses have unique experiences and their stories amuse or shock or most often inspire. They experience great joy, indescribable pain, heartbreak and hope often on a daily basis. So it is with the stories told in Call the Nurse, the experiences of a nurse in rural Scotland. The book is charming as it tells tales of joy, trouble, drama, and comedy. It's a quick read and a great diversion for these long days. The Kennedys are the focus of the next book, which is called Rosemary, The Hidden Kennedy Daughter by Kate Clifford Larson. Joe and Rose Kennedy's strikingly beautiful daughter, Rosemary, of schools, was presented as a debutante to the Queen of England and traveled the world with her high-spirited sisters. Yet Rosemary was intellectually disabled. That was a secret, fiercely guarded by her powerful and glamorous family. In Rosemary, Kate Clifford Larson uses newly uncovered sources to bring Rosemary Kennedy's story to light. Young Rosemary comes alive as a sweet, lively girl adored by her siblings. But Larson also reveals the often desperate and duplicitous arrangements the Kennedys made to keep her away from home as she became increasingly difficult in her early 20s, culminating in Joe's decision to have Rosemary lobotomized at the age of 23 and the family's complicity in keeping that secret. Only years later did the only years later did the Kennedy siblings begin to understand what had happened to Rosemary, and that inspired them to direct government attention and resources to the plight of the developmentally and mentally disabled, transforming the lives of millions. Today, the Kennedys are both admired and despised. There are many sides to their story. This book is both disturbing and, in the end, inspiring. It was one of People Magazine's top 10 books of 2015, and it remains a compelling read. We all know the legendary warrior Geronimo, or do we? Geronimo, my life, is the story of the most famous member of the Apache tribe, the spiritual and intellectual leader of the American Indians who defended their land from both Mexico and the United States for many years. Geronimo surrendered in 1886, and two decades later, while under arrest, he told his story through a native interpreter to S. M. Barrett, an Oklahoma school superintendent. Barrett explains this in his introduction, where he says, I wrote to President Roosevelt, that here was an old Indian who had been held a prisoner of war for 20 years and had never been given a chance to tell his side of the story. I asked that Geronimo be granted permission to tell that story for publication in his own way. It would be the story of his life. Well, this remarkable book is the result. It begins with Geronimo's retelling of an Apache creation myth and his descriptions of his youth and family. He explains his military tactics as well as traditional practice and religious rituals, and he reflects upon his hope for the survival of his people and their culture. Reading this book, you will witness and be inspired by true dedication and determination. Have you ever been asked if you could have dinner with any historical individual, living or dead, who would it be? I would choose Eleanor Roosevelt. There are several books on Hoopla that tell the story of Eleanor Roosevelt, certainly one of the most influential and inspiring women to be found in American history. I recommend Eleanor Roosevelt, Reluctant First Lady by Lee Lorena Hickok. Lorena Hickok was in a unique position to write the story of Eleanor Roosevelt's transition from a private individual to first lady of the land. 
As a news reporter, she knew Mrs. Roosevelt since Al Smith's campaign for president, and she was assigned by the Associated Press to cover her during her husband's presidential campaign in 1932. They became and remained very close friends. The author was at Mrs. Roosevelt's side throughout the momentous days of the campaign, election, and inauguration. A frequent guest at the White House, she witnessed the adjustment of its new mistress to the occupancy of that residence. Together, they took the last trips that Mrs. Roosevelt attempted in a vain effort to preserve her anonymity. Reluctant First Lady gives a fascinating and heartwarming insight into the problems and sacrifices that confront an active private citizen, wife and mother, whose husband becomes the President of the United States, whose husband becomes the President of the United States. Many books have been published about Eleanor and Franklin Roosevelt, and it is likely there are many more yet to come. But this is a relatively short introduction to a fascinating woman, an inspiration to all who come to know her. I spoke earlier of my friends Francis and Wilma. Wilma would often reminisce of her years at Columbia University in New York. She never failed to mention when she spoke of those years that Eleanor Roosevelt was largely responsible for her a farm girl from Illinois to find the funding and the courage to go to New York and earn her master's degree in business administration. Wilma so admired Eleanor Roosevelt, and I wonder if now, somehow, somewhere, Wilma and Eleanor have met. They would so inspire each other. Stay safe. Thanks for listening.